White types of people attract narcissists. I was always wondering that myself since I had to deal with them as a lawyer. After I became a very successful lawyer, I was targeted and dealt with a very horrible narcissist. So I'm going to tell you all about the types of people who attract narcissists. Hey there, I'm Rebecca Zung, and I am a lawyer. I'm also a narcissist negotiation expert, and I've helped lots and lots of people in relationships with narcissists, get out of relationships with narcissists. I've helped many people in negotiation settings with narcissists, and I am now 100% de dedicating all of my time to help you negotiate powerfully with narcissists so that you can break free from that narcissistic relationship. If you want to create a strategy, create leverage and get out of that relationship with a narcissist in a way that allows you to shift that dynamic and finally feel empowered, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell. I also have a free download for you. It's my key phrases for disarming narcissists. Just go to disarmthenarc.com, grab it totally free, disarmthenarc.com. If you want to be able to write emails, respond to emails, texts, stand there, talk to them, get on the phone with them, whatever it is, powerfully respond. Go to disarmthenarc.com and get those key phrases for disarming narcissists. So let me tell you, I have been there myself. I have dealt with the worst of them and I have shifted that dynamic. I know what to do. And I, I've done it without backlash. I also know what type of person attracts narcissists. And let me tell you, they don't attach themselves to you because you have so little value. They attach themselves to you because you have so much value. I know it seems crazy, but that's the truth. Think about it. They don't want the Kmart blue light special, the, the, the on sale clearance rack. No, they want somebody that's going to make them look good. And they want somebody who they feel powerful in devaluing. If they're going to control somebody, it makes them feel more powerful to control someone who is has lots and lots of value. They are opportunists. They want that shiny thing. They want that thing that looks good. They want that thing that's you know, has lots and lots of value. Why would they want to devalue something that's like trash? There's no power in that. So think about that. And they want some someone who's going to give them lots and lots of value, who's going to feed their ego, who's going to give them something, who's feeding them supply of some sort. If they're not getting anything out of you, then there's, there's no reason to be around you anymore. That's why they are attracting you in the first place. You know, they are insecure. They have low self-esteem. So they feel horrible inside. They feel empty inside. I know that's not what it seems like. They have this very massive facade on the outside that they coat themselves with, that they paint on on the outside, where they make themselves seem like they're so confident and they have all of this power and control and that they're so smart and all of those things, but it's all just an act. Deep down inside, they feel scared. They feel shame. They hate themselves. You know, there's two sides to every narcissist, two sides. On the other side, though, you should know that they do want somebody who has a lack of boundaries, who they're going to be able to condition, who has a lot of empathy who they're going to be able to say who who usually is a person who grew up in a household there was a lot of chaos and dysfunction 
normally. That person probably didn't have a lot of boundaries in their life. And so therefore has a hard time saying no or has a hard time with sticking to boundaries. And so therefore, when that narcissist comes at them and does things that they shouldn't necessarily do, that person generally is like, oh, Uh, it's okay. I'll let them go or I won't say anything or I'll let them get away with it this time. Or, you know, I'm going to have empathy for them because they had a bad childhood too, or I can love them enough for the both of us, or I feel bad for them because they had a bad day or because they aren't doing well at work, or they they know how to play on your emotions. They know how to make you feel bad. They know how to make you feel guilty. They know how to manipulate you. They know how to flatter you. They know how to put you into these positions so that when they do things that they shouldn't, you allow them to get off the hook. So therefore, the boundaries that should have been put into place don't end up being put into place because you end up making excuse. You almost end up making excuses for them. And I I just I know because I've been there. So I'm not judging you. I'm just saying that I've been there, too. And then what happens is time goes on and you're deeper and deeper into the relationship and you haven't said anything or you've allowed things to go by because you didn't want to say anything or you thought, well, maybe it's too small of a thing to say or they were having a bad time and you just wanted to be the nice person and you were hoping that they were going to notice that you were how kind you were being or how generous you were being or how giving you were being or how loving you were being. And eventually they were going to acknowledge your generosity and kindness and all of the things that you were doing for them. You know, I even talked to somebody recently who said that they had grown up in a house where they hadn't been given as much love or whatever. And so they thought, well, I don't need as much. I can just pour myself into this person and I can just take whatever scraps of love the narcissist is willing to give me and I'll just be more loving to this person and I will pour myself into this person. And you just end up giving and giving and giving and they just end up taking and taking and taking. So they look for people who find it difficult to say no. You just have to learn how to say no. Just say no. So I want you to put that in the comments. Just say no. Just say no. And I think especially women, A lot of times, you know, we have a hard time saying no because we want to look like we're nice and we want to look like we're kind and we want to look like we're being good people and all that sort of thing. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, for us societally, you know, we are taught to be good and we're taught to be kind and we're taught to be nice and all of that. And, And then we end up being taken advantage of. And then you're so far down the road before you start to realize that this other person's needs have taken precedence over your own over and over and over again so many times to the point that you're just so completely drained, you know, where you're just such an empathic person and you end up being trauma bonded to this person because it's, you know, hot and cold and hot and cold and hot and cold, hot and cold so many times. And that's what causes that trauma bond to happen. That hot and cold, that love bomb to value, discard, love bomb to value, discard, love bomb to value, discard. And that's what a narcissist relationship is like. I have videos on all of those things, by the way. And, you know, that's what the narcissistic relationship is like. It's that toxic stew all the time. And that's what they look for. And, you know, there is that sort of symbiotic relationship between the empath and the narcissist because of that. It's difficult 
I know I've been there. I've been exactly where you are. No judgment coming from this side of the fence. Believe me, I've been uh, I'm on the same side as you. I've been exactly where you are. So how you can start to change that is step one, don't run. Start making those boundaries. You've got to start to recondition them. You've got to start to turn it around, recondition them. Step two, make a U-turn. And then step step three, that's when you start to break free. And then my whole slay methodology teaches you how to do that too. That's when you can start to employ that. And um, I teach you how to do that in my whole slay program. Narcissists do fall for lies too. I, I do want you to learn about that as well. And that'll be the next video that you watch. This is the one lie that all narcissists fall for. But before you get to that, make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit that notification bell, join my free private Facebook group, Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. That'll help give you the support that you need. And make sure you get that free download, key phrases for disarming narcissists at disarmthenarc.com. Disarmthenarc.com. And then go to watch that next video. This is the one lie that all narcissists fall for. And remember that today's a great day to start negotiating your best life. And I will see you in that next video.